Has this ever happened to you? You're learning about messaging for a project because you want to write some applications that need to communicate with each other. But when you look for answers, you find a load of buzzwords and jargon and no one seems to even want to agree what terms they should use for anything. What? Does this sound familiar? Yeah. Hi, I'm Max from IBM MQ. And in this video, I want to sort all of this out. In this video, I'm going to explain all the objects that you might need to think about to build the kind of awesome messaging solution that means you can do messaging in any environment you like. In this video, we're going to talk about event-driven messaging, we're going to talk about exactly one's messaging, messaging endpoints, how we build a messaging mesh, and all the objects that you might need to use to connect your applications together in a reactive way. Then we're going to link all of that to the objects that you'll see and control when you use IBM MQ. So let's get into it. So the first thing is messages. Now messages are the objects that you send around to make stuff happen with MQ. They've got a payload, which is the actual data that you want to send. For example, update this database or run this application. It's got a descriptor, which has control information that gets used to process that message. And then they've got specific message properties, which you can specify in your messaging app to get certain messaging behaviors. For example, you can set an expiry time for your messages. So after a certain time, they're not used. Messages can be set to be persistent, which means that they're always highly available and resistant to failures. When you use IBM MQ in production, we deal with persistence by replicating our endpoints, as well as a few other little things that happen in the background. But the upshot of that is that it's really hard to lose important messages, even if your system or your container or your cloud environment or your mainframe or anything else goes down. Now, if you've got messages to send, you're gonna need a messaging endpoint, somewhere to put them. In MQ, we often use queues. Now, this is where you put messages and they store your messages until you wanna get them again. Now, because queues store messages, they kind of act like a shock absorber to your whole architecture, so it can all be decoupled and run asynchronously. So what that means basically is that applications can put messages and they don't have to worry about if they're gonna reach their destination if the app at the other end that needs to consume it is busy. So the whole thing is decoupled. Now, because you're putting one message on a queue and it gets consumed when you take it off at the other end, this is called exactly once messaging or point to point messaging. Now, say that your application wants to tell a bunch of other applications to do something. Now that's called an event driven way of working. When you want to make event-driven applications that only do something when they get a message, and you don't want the application that sent the message to have to worry about who's going to consume it, then you can use publish-subscribe messaging to make super dynamic and super lightweight event-driven applications. Now, publish-subscribe messaging is a programming pattern for building event-driven decoupled applications. And what you basically do is you put messages to something called a topic, and those messages can be consumed by multiple receiving apps. And your application that sent those messages doesn't have to know anything about those applications that are receiving the messages. An example of where you'd actually use this kind of pattern is if you had an application that sends out flight status updates, which go to passengers' mobile apps, and you don't have to worry about how many passengers have the app, you just send out the flight updates. Now, the next thing is the most important part of any solution that uses IBM MQ, and that is something called a queue manager. Now these are basically the brains of the system, so they have the function of something like a server, but for messaging. So they host the queues and the topics, and they work together to manage all of your messaging objects. They're actually super lightweight, and you can deploy them anywhere you want, like in a container, in any public cloud, on a mainframe, or even super hardware constrained environments like a Raspberry Pi, you can basically put them wherever you like. When you have a large solution, or one that's distributed in different locations on a network, it can be a really, really good thing to have more than one endpoint and instead have a connected messaging infrastructure that we call a messaging mesh. Now, if you've got a messaging mesh, that means that you can put messages from an application to some endpoint, and you know that those messages are gonna end up in the right place, wherever that might be. Now, that's actually really easy to do with IBM MQ. So you can join up MQ queue managers into an MQ network which is distributed over your entire architecture. Now, your applications then don't have to know anything about how the messages get to their destinations. All they need to do is put a message to an endpoint, and MQ will sort out the rest of that for you. An example of this is when a retailer has a queue manager working at the edge in each of their stores, which communicate with queue managers in the cloud to send payment information and so on whenever a customer makes a purchase. 
If you want to know how MQ actually handles moving the messages around, basically, the message routing is handled by these things called channels. Channels are objects that are used to send messages from place to place, and they're how queue managers communicate with each other. Now, because we want to make sure that all of our components are loosely coupled, we need to make sure that our messaging solution that's connecting them all can deal with failures. So if an endpoint or a queue manager goes down, or if there's a massive surge in demand, messages can still get sent. Now, we do this in IBM MQ through clustering. Now, that's where we group together queue managers to work together and do some specific things like balancing application loads, data replication, or some queue managers might even wait on standby in case the active ones go down to take up that load and basically make sure the whole cluster is extremely highly available. So the upshot of all of this is that you can build out a solution where you've got decoupled components and a super powerful messaging mesh between them. But all you have to do as an application developer is put your messages to an endpoint and everything else is handled for you by MQ. So these are the things that we talked about today. And you can see we've covered quite a bit. But the key takeaway is basically that a good messaging solution will join up all of your applications and it'll take care of all the stuff that's related to messaging for you. So you can put all your messages to messaging endpoints like queues and topics, and you can put your focus on writing the code that you want for your applications. The final thing to mention is that the containers and cloud versions of MQ have a free developer config that's preset. And that basically means that lots of the objects we've talked about today are actually already created for you. Now, if you're running MQ somewhere else, there's a link in the description so you can get those presets for yourself, so you can use the developer config if you want to as well. In the next video, we're going to go into more depth into the messaging patterns. So that's all the different ways that you can use messaging software in your applications to get awesome results. If you're new to messaging, we've got an MQ badge course that you can take to help you make sense of it all. Don't get stuck like this poor guy. Have a look at it at the link here. So that's the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully this was helpful to you. Leave us a like if you learned something new and let us know what it was or what you'd like to see next in the comments. Thanks very much for watching and we'll see you next time. Cheers.